Let's investigate horizontal transformation. Identify the parent function f of x. Write the equation of the transformed functions g of x and h of x. So here we have shown graph in which we have three functions. One is f of x versus this one, right? This one. And that's the parent parabola, quadratic function, x squared. And then we have shown two functions by sides. One, which is g of x, it is translated two units to the right. And the other one is h of x, which is shifted two units to the left. Now, with the help of this video, we'll try to understand horizontal translation. As you can notice, let's consider for the time being the graph of f of x and g of x, right? I will leave h of x as an exercise for you to do, right? So that is for you to do, h of x, right? So we will concentrate at present on f of x and g of x. That is these two graphs, right? These two graphs. So that is our prime focus. And once you learn, then you describe h of x, correct? Now let's first talk about the parent function f of x. Now here you see a parabola going up with the vertex at origin. And if you notice, the points are at 1 we have 1 and at 2 we have 4, which is 2 square. Minus 1 is 1 and minus 2 square is 4. So these are the critical points along with the vertex at origin. These five are the critical points which define a parabola, correct? Now we will analyze these five points when we do transformation referring to parabola in all the questions every time, right? So whenever the parent function is x squared, at that time you have to consider these five points. Let's make a table of values here and write down these points. So, so we have a function which is f of x equals to x square and the critical points I'm writing x and y points here so the x point will start with 0 0 right in the center 0 0 as we move to the right this one we 0 0 we get 1 1 and at 2 the value is 4 similarly as we move left we get minus 1 1 and minus 2 4 so these five are the critical points on the parent function fx equals to x squared, right? So we are discussing fx equals to x squared. That is our answer for the first question. Identify the parent function. Now, we will try to write down equation for the transformed functions. I will do for g of x and leave h of x for you as an exercise. Now let's try to analyze g of x. Now, g of x, what do we notice? So let me write, make a similar thing here, and then we will describe it. What do you notice in g of x? Let's compare with f of x. One, the shape is congruent. This is most important. If the shape is congruent, then the only transformation which has happened is translation. Right? So we conclude here, congruent shape. That means only transformation is translation. I should also write congruent shape and same direction. Why I added that? In case the direction flips, then there could be reflection. Correct? So we will consider reflection later on. But here in this particular example, it is congruent shape and same direction. Therefore, it is just translation. Now, what type of translation? If you see from the original function, each and every point gets translated two units to the right. Do you see that shift? Two units to the right. Let's compare. Vertex, right? So it moves two units. Now, point which was at one, and when x is one, moves two units to the right. Do you see one, two? The point which is here also moves two units. So what do you notice here? Y values remain same, but X values moves two units to the right. 
So we can write our function, the transform function, which is g of x, as equal to x minus 2 whole square. Now, when we are moving two units to the right, why do we write minus 2 here? This is a huge problem to understand. So the way to understand is that look at the vertex. We need 0, correct? We need 0 at the vertex, correct? So, which we get at 2. When you put x equals to 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. Does that make sense? That is why we have minus 2 here. Now, let me tell you one more thing. This is one way of understanding. The other way is, whenever we are talking about inside function, then the reverse things happen. It is like inside out. Whenever something is happening inside, if I write minus 2, then say, move add 2. Correct? If I say 2 times x, then multiply by half. So whenever it is inside horizontal, it is always the reverse thing to be done. So you can remember like that also. Right? But I see it like what value of x will give me 0? It is 2, right? Plus 2. So it has to move 2 units to the right. That is how I see it, right? So we can write points, transform points, at least these three, which I showed you here. As you notice, the y values remain same, which is 0, 1, and 4, but the x values added on by 2, they moved all 2 units to the right. So instead of this, we get 0 plus 2, which is 2, 1 plus 2, which is 3, and 2 plus 2, which is 4. And you can check, at 4, we have 4, correct? So we get this point. Now, as an exercise, you can now look for the other things, right? So this was minus 1 plus 2 comes to 1 and this also shifts 2 units giving us the y-intercept. Do you see that? So all the points actually shifted 2 units to the right which you can get by adding 2 to the original values. So minus 2 plus 2 is 0, minus 1 plus 2 is plus 1. But the y values remain same which is 4 and 1. So that is how the key points get transformed. But in case I have to write a general statement which could cover all the key points, all the key points, then how should I write? That is, how should I transform each and every point on my parent function to the transformed function? That is the question. So, let us say on the parent function we have a point x, y. Like we have these x, y's. Right? Then, how is the transformation so we'll write the transformation like this, transform functions, right? Transform functions will be, in this particular case, y remains same. But x will take 2, plus 2 in this case. And y value remains same as y. That is the transform point. Do you understand? So what we learned in this video is, when there is a horizontal transformation, then the shape of the graph remains same it is congruent to the original graph but points translate if they translate towards the right then we add that much number so in general if I have a graph in general let me write a function like this if I write a function let's say g of x another new function don't get confused with this one as let us say x minus p whole square it means we are shifting p units to the right. That is what it means. If I make it plus, it will be p units to the left. Each and every x point changes. But the y value remains same. That is what you need to take from here. Correct? I hope this point is absolutely clear to you. Right? So let me write this general point for you here so that you can remember. If my function is g of x, equals to x minus p whole square then the transformation is like this points x and y gets shifted by x plus p comma y so y value will remain exactly same but the x value will increase by p right so that is how you get horizontal translation i hope it's absolutely clear to you now as an added exercise I have let this h of x for you. So here what is happening? If you compare with f of x, it goes left side by 2 units, right? Try to do this and then move on 
with the next video. If you appreciate it and like it, do let me know. I want this to be the best resource ever. Thank you.